people's lives are like absolutely destroyed by this. Like I talk to people all the time. It, it causes complete, complete emotional anhedonia, brain fog, uh, the, gen- the genital numbness. I'm afraid. I really am afraid that it's on my mind a lot. What is going to happen to me mm-hmm. in the future if, if I get so bad that I feel like I can't work anymore, you know? All right, what's going on, guys? This is Mark Millick here with the Moral Medicine YouTube channel. Today, we are going to be talking to Nick. Nick is a PSSD patient. He's going to be telling us his story and going through his experience with uh, with this disease. So, Nick, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, Mark. Uh, thanks for having me on. I appreciate you very much. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Nick, real quick, you know, most of the time we have uh, post finasteride syndrome patients on this channel. So, you're actually our first PSSD patient. If you don't mind, can you kind of give an overview of what PSSD is? Well, PSSD stands for post SSRI sexual dysfunction. It um, kind of implies that it's only really sexual, but in reality, that's kind of a misnomer because it's so much more than that. So it is, it's so, so, so much more than that. People's lives are ru- like absolutely destroyed by this. Like I talk to people all the time. It, it causes complete, complete emotional anhedonia, brain fog. Uh, the gen- the genital numbness, um, like for example, myself, I can't feel the, my my feelings of happiness, sadness, joy, uh, excitement, and and this all started after I had gotten off my medication. There's so many there's so many um, uh, symptoms that so many people describe, um, but uh, yeah, it's. Not yeah, it, it seems like a lot of the symptoms. No, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm truly sorry you're going through this, man. So it seems like a yeah. lot of the symptoms do overlap with post finasteride syndrome symptoms as well. Yeah, it does. It does. And sexual dysfunction. So, uh, and I know there's a lot of speculation that uh, the mechanism might be the same for PSSD and PFS. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, we can only keep, hope. We, yeah, we can only hope. We, we all, we're always hoping that a cure for one will be a cure for the other. You know, yeah. that's absolutely, absolutely. So. Uh, there's definitely some good research going on now on the PFS front. And again, hopefully the uh, mechanism overlaps and this can be just a universal thing that helps anybody with any of these, uh, you know, diseases that right. are caused by pharmaceuticals. Right. So I believe so, you guys, you guys use Mel- Melkonji as well, right? It's Roberto yeah, Melkonji so, in the University of uh, Milan. Yeah, there's, there's several different studies going on. You have the PFS Foundation. I'm not overly familiar with their studies. Uh, you have the PS, uh, PFS Network. Uh, which I think they're focusing more on um, the epigenetics potentially that could be causing yeah. this. There's a lot of different theories out there as to what's holding yeah. in this. I mean, I think it's good that we have a myriad of different studies and different organizations that are uh, looking into this. So uh, we have a lot of support right now. We're hoping we're hoping to get more though here as, as you know as soon as we can, right? Absolutely. So uh, having said that, you know, what was your life like before you got PSSD? <laughs> well. I initially got on the medication because I did have depression and I did have anxiety. However, obviously, emotional numbness, not being able to feel any of my emotions was never, ever anything that I'd ever dealt with before, especially the genital numbness. That is, <laughs> that's not a thing. That's not a symptom of depression. You know what I mean? Right. Um, right. But it, it, I would say relatively normal. It, it, yes, of course, I did. I did have have my anxiety issues. Sure. You know, maybe if I had, you know, maybe gotten some proper therapy, maybe I could have dealt with that better. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, but I think that in my case, I I, I wish I didn't get on this medication. Sure. You know what I mean? But uh, I was just, I I had been working. I I worked just like anybody else. I started the medication when I was, I think I was 19 years old. It was in 2016. Okay. You know, um, I started with Zoloft, mm-hmm. I believe it was. I don't remember the, the dosage exactly. And I stayed on that for a while. And uh, eventually I transitioned to, over to Trintelix. Okay. Both of right. those are SSRIs. Correct. Both of those are SSRIs. Trintelix, I felt like it worked pretty good. Honestly, for me, the, the, the antidepressants, it worked. It worked okay. You know what I mean? They did the job that they were intended to do. And I felt okay on them and I had no issues with them personally. A lot of other people, uh, you'll hear a lot of other sufferers of PSSD. They'll talk about how PSSD started after the first pill, which mm. is from, from current science. They all say, you'll hear a lot of doctors say things like, 
how that's not possible. That's not pharmaco- pharmacologically possible, but it's sure. it's obviously not the case because there are so many people, people who people who go on SSRIs, SNRIs, any kind of antidepressant. They go they'll go on it for reasons other than anti or for sorry for depression. They'll go right. on it for reasons reasons other than anxiety, such as like they'll prescribe it for IBS. You know what I mean, stuff like that. Or if you have, I think they'll do it for sleep issues. Or if you're having, if you have um if you ejaculate too fast, you know, stuff like that. Sure. Right. Right. Um, um, and then I know people who go on it because they're just having a, they're just stressed out of school. You know, they're not depressed. They're not anxious. They're just stressed out. They're having, they have maybe a family member died. They're, they're, they're having too much going on in their life. Right. They don't have anxiety. They don't have depression. And yet they'll get on this medication. And some of these people, I talked to one person, I actually talked, I interviewed, I don't want to say interviewed, but I, I had a discussion with a sufferer from Germany mm-hmm. a couple of weeks ago. He got on it. He's going, he's in a medical, medical school himself. He took one pill and that was when all the symptoms started after one singular pill. He was just stressed out from school. That's why I got on it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Unbelievable. Yeah. So my symptoms didn't start until I got off of the medication myself. Right. And that was in 2020. And <laughs> I never heard of PSSD. You know what I mean? I didn't, I, I, it now my, at the time it was, it was mild. Okay. Mm-hmm. My symptoms were very mild, Okay, uh, but I knew that something was wrong. You know what I mean? Like something, sure. something didn't feel right. Okay. Cause I, <laughs> off your body. I, I know that. Feeling. Right. Right. Cause, 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 cause like, you know, you look, you look, you look any, any healthy young man, like I was, this is, this is 2020. Then I was 20, about 23 at the time. Mm-hmm. So I just remember I was like looking at women and I was like, why don't I like, why don't I feel the same way? Like, why do they, why do I not? It, it just felt like I didn't care as much. I was like, this is so strange. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So I started, you know, I, I consulted Dr. Google and, and I wanted to figure out what was going on. And I started finding things about um, post SSRI sexual dysfunction. Mm-hmm. I didn't have the anhedonia as much at the time, but, but the sexual uh, symptoms were, um, they were, those were showing themselves. Okay. So, so and the reason recap. why I, what's oh, no, go, go ahead. I just want to give a quick recap. Oh. Just so I understand you started taking the medication in 2016. Correct. Uh, off it back in 2020, you said, right. Um, I got off of them in 2020. Yep. And during that time, you really experienced no symptoms whatsoever. You felt like the medication was was helping you, if anything. It sounds like. Yeah, yeah. If it, I, it didn't, it didn't really cause me any so much anhedonia or sexual problems. I was lucky sure. in that regard, you know. Sure. So um, it wasn't again. It wasn't until it got off. Say that again. Well, what made you decide to come off it then? <laughs> now, the reason why I got off is because one of my friends wanted to do like some. Some, uh, some drugs, I guess you could say. Okay, okay yeah, I'll sure, just say sure, it. Yeah, sure. so, <laughs> sure. okay. so I was like, yeah, okay, I want to be smart about this. I want to be responsive about it. Okay, sure. I want to do. I'm going to do some mushrooms. Okay, sure. So, all right. Now, obviously, everything everything you read online says don't do these things if you're on an SSRI, SNRI, because obviously you don't want uh, ser- serotonergic. I believe the word is these kinds of things to to interact. You don't want to get serotonin syndrome. That's that can be. That's- I Deadly heard of serotonin syndrome, yeah. Yes. I heard with uh, particular, I think mushrooms or psilocybin, they cause like an excess of serotonin to flood the body. Right. Yes, exactly. Right. I actually heard it has a really bad chemical reaction to it. So right, that makes it sense. Sure that you're trying to do the right thing. I mean, you were trying to do the yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So right. So I was like, okay, well, if this is this is a safe drug, you know, uh, the, the antidepressants. I mean, at the time, I'm like, okay, sure, it's just antidepressants. If I if I want, if I'm going to get off them when I'm when I did my thing, I'll just get right back on them. As far as I knew, the worst that can happen was brain zaps, which if whoever's watching this hasn't heard of that, it's like, I haven't experienced them myself, but brain zaps, I guess, from what everybody else says, it's like your brain literally feels like every so often, or maybe some people experience it more where they're just literally feel like a shocking, like a, a very unpleasant, uncomfortable shock feeling in their, in their mind. It's um, like for, a shock in the back of the head. I've had it myself. I had it when I was taking have you? finasteride and it's absolutely- Finas- It happens with finasteride? Yeah, it's not even listed as one of the potential symptoms. And I didn't know when I was taking finasteride myself. I don't want to make this too much about my about myself, obviously, but sure. I took it for 15 months and around month eight, I was experiencing the brain zaps and it was it was horrendous. Wow. No idea what was causing them. But it's it's a really scary thing, obviously. And you're not really sure what you know biochemical reaction is taking place in the brain that could be, you know, what that could be affecting ultimately. So 
Yeah, right, I, right. I know. Yep. Yeah. So <laughs> I did my thing. I, 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 you know, I took those, you know, I took shrooms and all that. I had, I had my fun. Um, but during this time, I started experiencing withdrawal symptoms as well. And mind you, I was off of them from October 2020, and then I ended up getting back on it in 2021. Okay. And the reason I ended up getting back on it in 2021 was not only because the withdrawals, the anxiety, the, the constant, constant anxiety. Like I'd never had this kind of anxiety before. Mm-hmm. It was like, it, it was like literally like I was having almost like panic attacks mm-hmm. about any and everything. Like I could just be laying. I remember I, I, very, I vividly remember just laying down in my bed, just staring at nothing and feeling like, holy crap, like this, <laughs> like I feel like I'm going to die. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Or, and there's just nothing you could do to stop it. And again, before medication, never, ever felt like that. Um, so mm-hmm. I, part of the reason I got back on in April of 2021 was because I wanted that to stop. And also because I had read on the PSSD subreddit that some people had, you know, gotten back on, they had reinstated the medication right? and, uh, and, and that ceased their PSSD symptoms. And mm-hmm. I was just kind of, I guess I could say I took a gamble and I lost. Sure. So, so that made my symptoms a little bit worse getting back on it. Just. You know, so you got off in October, 2020, got back on it, April, 2021. Correct. And then from there, how long did you take it for? Are you still on it? I'm not still on it today. No. So from there I took it, I was back, I was back on 10 milligrams of Trintilix. My, now mind you, when I, before I got off in 2020, I was always on 10 milligrams as well. Um, now in 2021, I got back on 10 milligrams and I was on 10 until I think it was maybe October of 2021, where I went, I dropped down to five. I believe mm-hmm. it, it, my symptoms got a little bit worse again from there. Sure. And then um, when I started kind of paying a lot more attention to the PSSD subreddit again, mm-hmm. in I think it was June 2022, mm-hmm. I decided to myself, okay, I'm never going to get better from this mm-hmm. if I don't, if I'm, if I'm still on this medication. So mm-hmm. I said, all right, you know what? I'll just deal with whatever this has to throw at me. Sure. And I'm going to, I'm going to try to get off the medication, but this time, instead of going, mind you in 2020, I went cold Turkey. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, so that was a big no, no, but I did that, you know, mm-hmm. shouldn't have. Um, so in, in June of 2022, I decided to start tapering properly and I, and I actually tapered very, very, very slowly. Mm-hmm. Um, to the point where I actually went out and I went online and I bought uh, a scale there was a this, this precision scale that could measure up to like like a hundredth of a gram. <laughs> I mean, I would just wow, like okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And I Very would cut. And I would make, yeah, yeah. And I would use uh, I would use some tools to kind of get the um, the the pill down to the exact pill weight that I needed to go down week by week or month by month. Mm-hmm. And I would get it right the exact same amount every single time. I made sure that it was the right weight. Um, and it didn't matter how, how, how little I dropped. This is the thing. It didn't matter how little I dropped, whether that was, you know, a 10th of, of the amount of the pill weight, I, I would always drop it by how much the pill weighed. So <laughs> if I remember right, the pill weighed like 0.167 grams or some crap mm-hmm. like that. Okay. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I remember I dropped down to like 0.150 for a month. And then I went down to, and I had horrible, again, the, those withdrawals, that anxiety, I had that again during that time, just for that little amount, that little drop. Sure. Yeah. And and my symptoms would get worse. My PSSD would get worse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I remember, okay, I would drop down every, a month after that. So this is July. I went down like 0.140 and mm-hmm. that was a little bit less of a taper. And I still had the bad anxiety. I still had the, the worsening symptoms of PSSD sure. symptoms. Like my, what would happen to my, my um, emotional anhedonia, my libido, uh, would we, get worse and worse. I would, I would notice it just, just in sure. parallel. It was like in parallel. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 It would go down with each other. Right. Um, I dropped down to 0.135 and then 0.130. And I realized, okay, I'm dropping this such a minuscule amount and I'm still having this, these, these withdrawals and, and anxiety and crashes. And then I remember I dropped down just 0.001 and I still felt it, mm. you know? Oh, wow. Um, and then this is where things started to get worse, like really bad. Okay. This is where things started to get really bad was, was I thought to myself, okay, 
I can't taper. This is like going <laughs> to, I keep getting worse and worse every time I do it. I'm afraid that if I taper more and more, every time I do, by the time I'm done, I'm going to be like a zombie. Sure. Okay. So I figured, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to um, just go cold turkey again, just like I did before. Mm-hmm. And I thought to myself, all right, I don't want to have that horrible anxiety like I did before. Mm-hmm. I need to find something that is going to help me get through that while the, maybe someday the, the anxiety will go away. Okay. okay. So what I did was I tried mushrooms again, and this was a very, very small dose. Sure. It was like 0.3. That's a very, that's like a micro, that's a micro dose. That's a micro okay. dosing at that point. Right. Yeah. 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 So, okay. I was like, all right, this probably won't have any horrible interactions with that, especially from what I looked up. Uh, I made sure I looked up other people ex- experience uh, taking mushrooms while also on SSRIs. They said that a microdose is generally fine. Sure, right. Um, and this, what happened to me now, what I deal with today, this was um, back in September of 2022, mind you, me taking these mushrooms. Mm-hmm. It started this weird issue that I know I'm not alone on, because I've talked to other people where my symptoms are now getting worse and worse mm-hmm. week. And I mean, week by week mm-hmm. where it's just constantly declining constant. Like in, again, in parallel, like I've described in September, <laughs> if, if I had, uh, things were not great in September, but if I had stayed like that, I probably could have lived like that for a long time and been relatively okay. Right, but right. ever since then, ever since I took those mushrooms, it interacted with my PSSD in such a way that now I keep getting worse and yeah. worse and worse. And 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 now since then, I experienced genital numbness as well, which is continuously getting worse as well. Hmm. Like I really can't. I have pretty much no libido. I it's very difficult to feel things down there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I, I don't really feel much emotions like i know i can display emotions i know you can right. see it in my face that i'm displaying it but right. i don't feel it you know yeah. what i mean absolutely um yeah it's like <laughs> i'm just i keep i keep hoping like okay maybe it's gonna finally stop now <laughs> you know but it just keeps getting and it's it's so weird it's like clockwork it's like it's on a freaking schedule where it's so i because i've been basically kind of trying to measure it out or, or write it down and it seems like it's almost like every five days it's so strange really it's like almost between like four and six days. Mm-hmm. It's the strangest thing in the world. Yeah, I don't right. know why. It, and people speculate. Remember how you said uh, we, we, we could talk about epigenetics? Sure. People speculate an autoimmune problem. I've okay. Like it's our yeah. body attacking itself in some way that we just right. science isn't 100% sure on. Sure. Sure. Because what else could it be? Like, why would it be getting, I took mushrooms back in September. Why is it still happening? Why am I still getting worse? It's now we're in May. That's one of the mysteries behind these illnesses is that for some people, it gets worse progressively. Other people, they stabilize eventually within a month or two. Some people, they don't stabilize for yeah. a year or two. Other people, they they get worse and they get better. Other people, as soon as they hop off within a couple of weeks, they get better. Um, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. make any sense whatsoever. And, you know, whatever the mechanism is, I mean, so you said every five to six days, you tend to get worse <laughs> around that point. Like, yeah, it's, week, it's things still get worse. right. It's very small. It's very small of, of sure. I, I call them their crashes. Really. I call them that. Um, yeah, it's, I'll notice that I'll have just even less libido, even less feelings. My, they're right. less intense. I can feel them right. just ever less and less. Right. And I, I, you know, you keep mentioning anhedonia. That's something that, that very few people I think can understand, you know, you can experience depression, you can experience anxiety, but to have absolutely no emotions whatsoever, to be completely blunted, you know, with your emotions where you can't feel love, you can't feel happiness, you can't feel joy, you can't feel anger, you can't feel sadness. I mean, yeah, to have robbed yeah. Of it, it's essentially robbing you of the entire human experience. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I'd, absolutely. Rather feel, I'd rather feel sadness at this point if I could um yeah but to not even feel that it's like you just feel really you feel like a zombie best way to describe it yeah and on one hand you could say that on the other hand i guess it's making the experience easier (laughs) yeah in in, in some sense it makes it less in some sense less sad i guess in some weird way because yeah yeah i don't want to try to detract from how terrible it is you know for sure it's it's horrible and i don't want to live with this any longer i'd like to experience my life if i go on vacation 
if I, if I go, if I, um, today's my day off, I'd like to be able to do the things that I enjoy, but it's just like, I'm kind of going through the motions, you know what I mean? Right. Right. And it's, you know, I'm not really looking forward to anything. I, yeah. And, and you look great, man. You look great. I mean, you look, you look like you're, you're happy, obviously, but inside, you know, you just, you're blunted. And I, I really, my heart goes out to you because that's pretty much what a lot of people experience with, uh, you know, not just PSSD, but PFS as well. And it's, um, it's indescribable and it's, um, it's yeah, terrible. It is. Doctors potentially gaslight you too and tell you this doesn't even exist. Yeah. So I don't want to comment for that. So let me, let me ask you that. Did you, have you gone to any doctors about this or have you seeked out any, any medical help? So, um, with my, with my doctor, I, cause I'm expecting, I'm expecting the gaslighting. So I kind of don't even really want to talk about it, to be honest with you. Cause my, my doctor, I remember I mentioned something kind of just to see what he say, what, just to see what he would say. And he said, <laughs> I can't believe this. this guy's been practicing medicine for like 40, 50 years, yeah. 40 years. And he's like, SSRIs don't cause sexual dysfunction. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> he's never even be heard like, of PSSD it, before. Not well. No, most doctors haven't heard of PSSD, Unbelievable. But, but, but every, it's like everybody knows that antidepressants cause sexual dysfunction. It says it on the freaking pill it on the bottle. Yeah. It says it like, in the <laughs> and he was like, no, it doesn't. <laughs> but, um, oh. my psychiatrist was, was, um, I actually, I kind of went out of my way just cause I just like said, screw it. And I told her all about it. And she yeah. was actually surprisingly uh, willing to listen to what I had to say about it. Sure. And I showed her like the, um, I showed her a page that had all the um, all the the medical literature that dates back like years and years. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I was like, "Here's right. this." I was like, "Here's the here's the the group that I'm a part of." You know, here's the here's the the PSSD network. Uh, mm -hmm. They're they're up and coming. You know, they're they're trying to spread awareness right. and all that. Here's the subreddit has thousands of people on it. You know, and you know, she, she was, was like, "Oh she crap!" Listen to it. Like I mean, she yeah, she didn't try to right yeah, she didn't try to gaslight or or anything like that. You know. I think as a, as a patient of, of PFS, I mean, if I just had a doctor acknowledge this, you know, that, that changes the, the emotion a little bit, maybe not the emotion since I don't feel any emotions, but you feel a little bit better knowing that it's, it's at least acknowledged by a doctor. You're being taken seriously as opposed to being told, yeah. this is all you, said. you know, I've only had personally one doctor out of probably 10 I've seen who even acknowledged that PFS even exists. Really? Uh, yeah. It's, it's incredible. Um, yeah. So let me ask you this, Nick. I mean, you kind of touched on this, but how has your life changed at this point with all this? Well, thankful. I haven't really told any of my family members, to be honest. Oh, wow. Um, I, I could, I should. I just, I don't know. It's kind of, it can be difficult. It's a lot to talk about. It's really? like, how do I... <laughs> Like, how do I tell the family member who I've been interacting with for years? Like, oh, yeah, this, I've been dealing with this. I just kind of haven't told you. You know, when it comes to my friends, you know, they've all, I've told a lot of my friends, they've all been open and receptive to it. You know, everybody, everybody I've talked to have, has been, thankfully, has right. been receptive and, and understanding. I have a, I have a girlfriend. Um, she actually, she actually knew about it um, uh, before it got really, really bad. Sure. Um, and you know, we started dating, even though she knew about it, which was awesome. Like, I, I'm so happy to have her. Like, she doesn't, she's not bothered by it. I feel really lucky to have her. That's awesome. That's um, right yeah. So, um, at this current point in my life, like, I'm still trying to live it, you know, mm -hmm. day by day. Um, I work 40 hours a week. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I guess you could say I keep myself distracted. You know. Mm -hmm. I, I try to play video games with friends or go out and, and, and do things um, mm -hmm. like anybody else would, you know what I mean? It just, right. it just isn't, it just don't, it just doesn't really, it has no feeling to it really. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just not enjoyable. Yeah. Um, that's for yeah. me personally. Uh, I know a lot of other people who, who struggle with, um, with working as it is. Like some people have this so bad, they have their brain fog. Thankfully, my, again, my brain fog isn't terrible. Sure. Um, their brain fog is so bad that they can't even work. You know what I mean? I've like, or they're dropping down from, yeah. A couple of people I've talked to, they're, they're in university. They've had to drop down to a couple of days a week or one day a week, you know? Right, right. Um, fortunately, it hasn't, it hasn't hit me that bad yet, but eventually it could. It could get that bad. I don't, again, I'm, I'm declining uh, every week. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm afraid. I talk about this with my partner, my girlfriend all the time. I say <laughs> like, what, if this gets really, really bad and I can't work anymore, like what's gonna, like, what are we, how are we going to go about this? You know what I mean? Right. And you know, she's, she's staying, remaining supportive of me again. 
and she says that she'll try to, you know, cover my half of the bills, my part of the bills. Right. You know, right. but I'm, I'm afraid. I really am afraid that it's on my mind a lot. What is going to happen to me mm-hmm. in the future? If, if I get so bad that I feel like I can't work anymore, you know, that's why these diseases are so devastating because they affect every yeah. aspect of your life. I mean, it takes your soul away in a sense. And I've heard of plenty of people it, who are essentially bed bound. You know, they really can't even leave their yes. house. Because their symptoms are so bad. They can't interact with people. Right. Either. Type A personalities who were ambitious right. and they were in their life and they had goals and ambition. Absolutely. And, and it just gets robbed from them. And uh to not be believed by doctors, um, wh- where do you go from there? You know, it's 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 a right. really hopeful feeling. Right. So, um, well, I really appreciate you sharing all that, Nick. I know it's difficult. Um, let me ask you this: did you feel like you had proper warning about any of these potential symptoms before you took the medication? <laughs> I mean, what did when you got prescribed it? I mean, what did no. the doctor say? No, never heard of anything like this before in my life. Mm-hmm. Who the hell has? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Again, it wasn't until I did my own due diligence after it started. You know, I had to, you know, people say you shouldn't, you know, consult Google for anything. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's, that's it's, we, we have to, we, we're, we're our own best advocate, really. You're right about that. You got to do your own research, unfortunately. I mean, a lot of people that were, were prescribed yeah. SSRIs or finasteride, they didn't, you know, they were told it was safe. They were told, you know, you might experience, it's you know, safe. Somebody, right. Somebody, once you come off right. the medication upon cessation, all those symptoms will go away. And then what happens right. when they That's, come, you know? Uh, yeah. You're totally, and then, it's on your head at that point. Yeah. So what we what we need most is we need awareness and we need research. Yesterday, <laughs> we yeah. need that. We needed right. that years ago, and, and and that's why you know one thing that keeps me hopeful is is um is the re, is the groups that are out there that spread awareness. So again, right. I do so I do some work with the PSSD network. Mm-hmm. Now they started uh, back in uh, August of last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I joined up with them in like September or October. Sure, with them, and it keeps me hopeful because because they they are very 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 committed very committed to, to spreading awareness and trying to get this done. Like they're working, there are some of those members, they're working tireless, tirelessly every single day. Like they're right. so committed. And honestly, I wish I had the same motivation that they did. I wish, I wish I could. Sure. Um, sure. Um, and I'm so thankful for them. I, I, the guy who started the group, I'm so, so thankful for him to put in the amount of effort that he has to get right. that all started. Um, so yeah, you're, and, and the groups and the many groups before that too. Yeah, absolutely. I, let me tell you this, Nick, you are contributing tremendously by, you know, going on video here and talking about your story and telling everybody about this. I mean, this is what we need to build awareness, obviously. And we have more and more I people so. up every single week who are willing to tell their story. And, uh, you know, any stigma that's associated with this is is being lifted. So I think it's only a matter of time now. So, um, I really appreciate you coming on here and telling your story. Do you have any closing statements you want to you want to say before we hop off here? Um, I just, I think that this, <laughs> I hope that my, again, my happy go lucky nature here. And, and I hope I haven't done a poor job at explaining how it, it's, it's impacted my life. Sometimes I feel like I've done, I do a poor job at that. I just, I can't, I cannot explain enough how many lives have been ruined. There are people, there are so many people that are in worse positions than me. Again, I'm lucky that I, I, I can still work. Okay. It's, I can't stress enough how, how bad this can get, how people have committed suicide because of this. Okay. How people's marriages, uh, lives are just, just ruined by this all the time. And, and we need, we need research. We need awareness, you know, for every video that the PSSD network release releases on on TikTok or whatever, it seems that we get people all the time that that reach out or comment. They'll say, "Wow, I." They basically say that they'll finally have a name to their symptoms. Okay, it's it's there's a lot more people than we realize that have this. I think. I Absolutely. think that most people just don't know. They don't yeah. know what's going on with it because again, with the gaslighting that we described before. People don't, people are afraid to talk with their doctors about it. Mm-hmm. Generally, people are, don't want to talk about sexual type of stuff. You know right. what I mean? Or right. people will attribute their declining sexuality to, to getting older. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. Or they'll, you know, again, they'll be told it's a relapse in depression. One of the th- most common things that doctors say is that this is a, a relapse in depression. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which yep. is just complete 
completely bogus. Again, genital numbness is not a symptom of depression. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and plenty of people take these medications for reasons other than depression. Yeah. You know? well, Nick, I commend you for your courage and thank you so much for coming on here. We really appreciate your time. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on.